a news ticker popped up on the top of the TV program we were watching. The disaster report told how, uh, what, what the hell? Municipalities all over were continuously sending out rain, flood, and wave warnings. Of course, the raindrops beating and beating harshly on the window were even more convincing. <sighs> Incredible. More like disastrous. すぐに編みそうな気もするけどな。それはまず台風の速度が遅いそうだから下手すりゃ明日も丸一日こんな調子らしいぜ。ちょっとの天気でも船は欠航するもんだしよ。やっぱり日曜日のうちには引き上げられ
Did you guys forget about the little girl who's probably still outside in the fucking rain? Cause I'm pretty sure her mom forgot. あめが降ろうが槍が降ろうがラフな格好でサンダルを履けば。5分足らずでコンビニに行けるような都会に引っ越したぜ。もう少しの辛抱だよ。高校卒業まであとちょっとでしょ。<laughs> Jessica stretched out and reclined in the sofa. Maybe it was a bad time slot because there weren't any interesting programs on and we had nothing to do but like um languidly kill time until we were called for dinner. After that episode, Maria never returned to the cousin's room after all. Aunt Rosa probably took her back to the mansion. It had to be pretty boring for Maria all by herself while the adults had a confusing conversation. We thought we might as well head over to the mansion and see her, but the weather really was awful. Uh, and since there wasn't much time until dinner, we stayed where we were. At that time, we heard the sound of a humble knock. Jessica answered, Hi! It was Kanan Kun's voice. Did he go to all the trouble of coming from the mansion in this rain just to tell, just to get us? Couldn't he have just called us on the telephone? Well, I guess servants at work don't always get to take the most efficient route. Georgia Nikki turned off the television and stood up. コーシのステーキとか言ってなかったっけうーん、たまらねえぜ。バトルズミーライトナウ、アイムソーハングリー。親族会議の日は特に豪華になるしな。私だって楽しみだぜ。行こう行こう。<笑> As we left the room, Canon Kun bowed quite silently and respectfully. Uh, maybe I should order something. Grubhub. Is it really nasty out there? Yep. Hi. After seeing the three of us out, Cannon peered into the empty room. Uh-oh. Rosa was lying on a sofa in an empty in the empty parlor, having fallen asleep before she knew it. She was bearing a burden that the children couldn't even imagine. That's why she only needed to let her guard down a little before the weariness immediately dragged her into the world of sleep. Realizing this, Genji brought a blanket over to her. When he tried to spread it over her, her eyes snapped open as though she'd been shocked with light electricity. <sighs> when she realized that the thing that uh, had touched her was just a blanket and that Genji had been considering I mean, considerately giving it to her, she let out a sigh of relief. Yeah, 
Oh wait, they got a Hawaiian barbecue? Uh, when he was asked for the time, Genji checked a pocket watch that he took out of his chest pocket. Rosa gave her head a little shake when she realized that not much time had actually passed, even though it felt like she slept for ages. Even though she didn't feel rested at all, the drowsiness that had enveloped her must have, must have been pretty deep. Rosa finally realized that the peaceful sound that had put her to sleep was actually the rain. From the window, what she could see of the rose garden was completely blurred by the wind and the rain. Mario. Oh, now you think about your daughter. Rosa knew her daughter's nature well, so a chill ran down her spine. Maria was you reap what you sow, idiot. Stupid. Even though she'd known about Maria's simple honesty better than anyone, she'd once again lost control of her emotion and done something terrible. <gasps> Maria! Rosa pushed Genji away and ran down the hall. The outside really looked like a typhoon and the rain was pouring down spe um, spectacularly. spectacularly. Maybe because of some aspects of the terrain, the winds weren't typhoon class so an umbrella wouldn't be torn out of one's hand. Even so, it certainly was a windy rain. There was no time to admire the roses being drenched. とりあえず、今はマリアが気になるぜ。いや。まさかあの後もずっと一人でへそ曲げて、あそこでバラ探しをしてるなんてことはない。Yes. Because she's nine. We hadn't worried much thinking that Rosa had taken her back to the mansion. However, when Canon Kun had come from the mansion to call us and thought Maria was here, we got a little worried. Uh oh. Yep. Somebody fucked up. 
急ぎ駆け抜けたもの、ね、そこまで注意を払いませんでした。Pro- the culprit is. If he had cut through the rose garden, taking the shortest line between the mansion and the guest house, then he would have just barely missed the place where Maria had been looking for her rose. And it was raining this hard, too. It certainly would have been possible for Cannon to fail to notice her. You should have just ran out when you heard that shit. I would have been gone. Georgia, Nikki, and I flew out into the rain. Jessica and Cannon followed us. When George and Nikki called out, called me called back, Aunt Rosa jumped at him and grabbed onto him. We don't know. She didn't come back. I wonder why. Nope, she isn't. Exactly. Six years ago, Maria was three years old. She was a cute and pure kid who just accepted whatever anyone said. But six years had passed since then. She's nine now, and experiencing the ups and downs of life should have taught her something. But Maria, are you telling me you're still as innocent and pure as you used to be? She's a child! Nine years old isn't that old, you dumbasses! Maria! As I circled the rose bed, something white unexpectedly turned to face me. It was a white umbrella. Maria was crouched down holding a white umbrella and still searching for that rose. Her face, which had turned bright red from her crying her eyes out, was dirtied and watered in mud. With water and mud, it was a truly pitiful sight. Maria had probably been here since the rain started pouring down. Her shoulders were freezing. She looked tired to the bone. But unfortunately, but fortunately, since she was holding an umbrella, she wasn't completely soaked. That doesn't matter. The umbrella probably came from the handbag Maria always carried around. Thank goodness. Seriously, thank goodness. Thank goodness you found her. You should be. This could have been way worse. Aunt Rosa threw her umbrella aside and hugged Maria. It looks like Maria still wasn't able to accept it, but she no longer had enough energy to left to resist. Jessica and Cannon couldn't caught up with us. They are slow. A towel? 
Maria. You need to run a hot bath for the child. I can't say anything to this, really. Hypothermia, more like. Fuck the damn cold. Maria, it's worse. もう食事の時間だぜ。マリアはよく頑張ったよ。天気が良くなったら、私たちも一緒に探してやるから。We couldn't stay in the rain forever. We took Maria with us as we headed back to the mansion. Maria apparently wasn't as worn out as I thought. When she remembered we were having calf steak for dinner, she started chanting, I'm hungry, I'm hungry, ooh ooh, and returned to her usual spirit itself. Aunt Rosa didn't chide Maria for saying ooh ooh. <laughs> マリア、傘なんか持ってない。え、お。うん。なんだよ。じゃあ、その手に持ってる白い傘はどうしたんだよ。うん。Look at her face. person must have brought her an umbrella. A normal kid would look for shelter once it started raining, but Maria was too stubborn to give up so easy. Me. So maybe that caring person gave up on telling Maria to find shelter, then decided to at least give her an umbrella. So, someone Oh shit! The freaking demon music just started. That name Maria cheerfully mentioned was that. Of the island's witch? Rosa took a deep breath and asked again trying to do so in a way that didn't damage Maria's good mood. That wouldn't damage. So, you got that, right? Wait, I thought they said, I thought they said that she asked again. Not that she said that's wonderful. So, who did you say? Who did you say? Who did you say? Oh, there we go. Never mind. Maria immediately realized that her mother didn't believe her and started crying out unhappily again. So Rosa stopped pursuing the subject. It pro it's it'd probably be faster to ask whoever lent Maria the umbrella during dinner rather than ask Maria herself. No. And once everybody starts saying nope. Oto san. Semete ban san ni dake wa shuseki shite kudasai. It's not gonna happen. Your father's in psycho land. Sorry. Kore de wa shinzo kai ni nari masen. Along with a dull pounding on the door, the sound of Krauss's entreaty he could be heard. However, that voice seemed to be de resigned to the fact that nothing it, it said would be heard. Kinzo-san, Semete, you should cry, right? Then, Kane, Antano Kao Mioto, Musco Santa Chigats, what the Kitirun Janaika? Tamari Nanju. <laughs> I 
Apparently, Kinzo was completely focused on the final battle of his long-lasting chess match with Nanjo. Kinzo's brow was wrinkled as he continued to st glare at the game board through his spectacles. Klaus's voice didn't reach his ears. Kinzo-san. I'm already tired. なら、お前だけで行くといい。私はもうしばらくこの一手を吟味させてもらうぞ。今夜で決着をつけてやる。You did this earlier. Nanjo rose from his seat, hoping this would prompt Kinzo to do the same, but Kinzo's eyes never left the chessboard. He knew well that Kinzo always displayed a blind concentration when it came to chess, but he'd never seen Kinzo concentrate as hard as this. It was almost as though Kinzo was telling the truth and there would never be another chance for them to continue their contest if they didn't finish tonight. It seemed that no matter how obstinately he called out to Kinzo, it wouldn't reach the latter's heart. Nanjo gave up and headed to the door that Klaus was still banging on. The door to the study opened. Klaus was taken aback thinking that maybe Kinzo was actually coming out. However, Nanjo was the one who appeared and Klaus let out a sigh of relief. Nanjo, <laughs> He's too focused on the chess game. Nanjo shook his head with a completely defeated expression. Klaus raised his fist once more and banged on the door, shouting, his voice was very loud and he was making a racket pounding on the door. There was no way it wouldn't reach Kinzo's ears. Well, it certainly was reaching him, but he ignored it anyway. However, unlike the time he'd been called down for lunch, he didn't fly into a rage. By now, Kinzo was calm at heart. Almost as though he had taken a on a philosophical view and turned himself over to fate. Why isn't eating your last meal the, the most important thing, though? That would definitely be one of my most important things. I would make sure I eat my last meals. To fill your soul, obviously. As though the painfully loud banging on the door completely feel, failed to enter his hearing, Kinzo silently thought about his next chess move, still in his philosophical state.